Today's video will show how the iterator works in the binary search tree. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. A common task we need to do with a container is to visit every element, and we do that with the iterator. Now, all iterators don't work the same. The binary search tree is definitely an example of one of the most complicated iterators in the standard template library. This video will demonstrate how the iterator works. We'll start with the definition of the iterator. The iterator is a nested class within the binary search tree. We know it's a nested class from the pinwheel operator. The iterator refers to a single binary node. Notice how the iterator has a member variable called p whose data type is a binary node. It's, a, it's related to the binary node through association, which means it doesn't contain a copy of the binary node, but rather a reference to it or a pointer to it. And of course, the binary node is a nested class within the BST. Now, one of the common things we want to do with the BST is we want to find the first node in the collection. We do this through the begin. And to do that, we keep traveling down the left side of the binary tree from the root all the way until we don't, no longer have a left node. That leftmost node is the first node in the collection. One of the most complicated operations is how to advance the iterator. This is done through the plus plus operator. There are three cases. First, if we have a right child, then we advance to the right child and then go as far left as we can. As long as we have another left node, we keep going that way. This is another way to look at this is we go right and then jig left. The set case number two is we have no right child and we are our parent's left child. If that's the case, we just hop up to our parent's node. The final case is we have no right child and we are our parent's right child, in which case we keep going right, 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 as long as we're our parent's right child, and then we jig left. To see how this works, let's take a look at an example. All right, I have a large binary tree, which I'm going to fill with a collection of values. I'm adding these values in a very specific order, so they fill the binary tree in a nice, balanced way. And I'm going to iterate through them all. After I initialize my binary tree, binary search tree with my initializer list, it looks like this, with 61 as my root node. To begin our loop, we need to find b.begin. So we start at the root node, which is 61, and we keep going left as long as we can, as long as we have a left child, and that leaves us with 11. 11 is our first node. Now, from here, we have to use the plus plus operator. In which case are we going to do here? Well, I have a right child, so I'll do case one. In this case, I'm going to keep, I'm going to go right one node, which is to 19, and then I'm going to go as far left as I can, and that brings me to 12. Once I'm at 12, I have no right child. I have no left child either, but I am my parent's left child. So therefore I do case two and that's going to me, I go up to my parent and that's 19. At this point, I have a right child. So I'm back to case one and I go as far, I go one slot to the right and as far left as I can, but there is no left opportunity. So I just go to 26. At this point in time, I am my parent's right child. So therefore, I keep going up as long as I'm my parent's right child all the way to 11, and then I jig right. Now I'm at node 28. 28 has a right child, so I go right and then as far left as I can, which takes me to 31. Now I have no children, and I'm my parent's left child. So I go up to my parent's node. Here, I have a right child, so I go right one, and I go as far left as I can, which takes me to 49. 49 has no right or left child for that matter, and my parent's left child, so I will go up to my parent. Now, I have no right child, and I'm my parent's right child, so therefore I keep going as long as my parent's right child, and then I go up one more than that, which takes me to 61. Now I have a right child, so I have a right child, so I go right and as far left as I can, which takes me to 20 to 64. 64 has a right child, and I'm just going to go down one, and then I cannot go left, so I'm going to go to 67. 67 has no right or a left child for that matter, so therefore, I'm, and I'm my parent's right child, so I'm going to go as, as long as I'm my parent's right child up to 64 and then jig up one more. Now, 73 has a right child, so I'm going to go to the right and as far left as I can, which takes me all the way to 85. 85 has no right child, and my parent's left child, so I go up to my parent node. My parent node does have a right child, so I go right and as far left as I can, but there is no left child, so I just go to 89. 
Now I have no children, but I'm my parents' right child. So I'm going to go um, as long as my parents' right child, which is, takes me to 86 and go up one more than that. At 92, I have a right child. So I go to 99. Now, 99, this is interesting. I have no right children. I'm my parents' left child. So I'm going to keep going up until I get to, until I, I have no more right child. And that takes me to 61 and one beyond that, which takes me to the null, which means I'm finished. You can learn more about how the iterator is implemented by taking a look at the iterator section of the BST chapter in the C++ Data Structures textbook.